Hello everyone and welcome to our circle and salve women. If you have ever taken a nap where you were saying just 15 minutes and then you wake up a few you know hours later, my husband actually just tricked me into thinking that it was like much later and I'm so grateful because I had intended to really catch up on my videos and you know when life happens as a mother, as a student, excuse me, as a teacher to your students and of course as a wife, th there's just I'm a zero 100 type of person. And I have always said that it's like what you commit yourself to is what you put your heart and your mind and your body and your spirit into. And so for me, anything that I really commit and dedicate to is where my focus is. And then all of a sudden you have all this foci, right? Like all these focal points. And then all of a sudden you find yourself sometimes not even realizing how exhausted you are. And that's just how it is. And you know, in the blessings, it doesn't mean that you just sit there and watch everything come pass you by. You're actually at just making sure that you're participating in all of it. And you know, looking back, knowing that you were there front and center and so here I am and so that goes into our article thinking to be in the right by running away and I remember I believe I was in college the very first time I read about John Locke and what I essentially learned from him is that he had this belief tabula rasa and it really just from what I recall or can really just just summarize is that we are a blank paper and you know our experiences our journeys our minds everything that we put ourselves into is really what we create for ourselves and so you know i thought that was so interesting because being very in the spiritual sense yes you have your traits you have your characteristics you have your makeup you are definitely a masterpiece in the making but it's not as if you were masterful and 100 percent complete from the moment you were a baby right that just doesn't make sense right being in an infantile stage we know that we have to go through a process i mean think about you know all the many people in life that have culminated themselves into this just wondrous remarkable historical figure and yet they weren't that way when they were first born. In fact, I remember Albert Einstein. I didn't mention that in my article, I don't recall. But his parents really questioned his intellect, his ability to be able to just speak or read was at question. And yet we speak of him historically now. And so there are many of those of us that will be spoken of after we have left and all the many things that we have done and yet we're in this sign of the times where it's like to get a like to get you know recognition that this moment it's like we want to feel it we want to hear it we want to see it of who we are today and we're all chasing for this this recognition this acknowledgement when you have to ask yourself what are you doing each day to really fulfill your purpose, your destiny. Are you doing it for others? Or are you doing it for yourself? And is it something that you really feel is is pushing you through in the right direction? Or are you becoming robotic? Are you becoming mechanical in just what you say or do? And, and, and perhaps even think, right? Because when people enter our mind, then all of a sudden it's like you start to derail from your true characteristics and, and all your inner traits somehow get mangled with all of these these just being compressed with all of what others are trying to influence within you to become and yet then all of a sudden you have to ask yourself am I even wearing the right shoe size <laughs> and are the blisters really starting to show it now that am I starting to really feel it to a point where I can no longer walk in that direction so you know me with my analogies that is what we're going to speak of and and as children we have so much light in us and I just you know <laughs> remember my mama saying like when she was young she used to think and i mentioned this in one of my books in the past where just wishing that when her grandmother would cross the street uh, obviously walking a little bit slower that she would wish that some truck would hit her and i'm thinking to myself you know when i share that with my husband that he was really in disbelief that she would even say something like that and i wonder it's like okay but our innocence how does that then get influenced by all the many things that happen to you? Because, you know, I realized that that rebel in us and just my mama saying 
how she would sometimes be found, you know, in her own, in, uh, in a room because she would just be mischievous as a child. And I remember times being mischievous. I've shared stories where, you know, I would be climbing a tree and my papa would say, you climb a tree one more time, you're going to get it. And guess what? That's where he'd find me and I would be stuck. And it's so, of course, you know, that's where he would locate me. And there I was just awaiting my destiny of punishment that I he had forewarned me and as you know to be consistent as a father you have to follow through and I and I get that now and the only thing is is as children we don't realize that everything that we journey everything that we create just like John Locke had said the the this this part where you cannot go back and erase. And once again, I didn't mention this in my article in this one, but my one of my sons just came forward to me and said, you know, there was something that he, we would always talk about. It's like whatever you enter into your mind and you know, whatever you allow, remember you cannot erase it. And so he shared something with me that he regretted for doing. And I'm so grateful that he shared that because it's like just to release that, right? Just to confess it and say, here's something that I regret. And then he and I, you know, had him own it. It's like, okay, now you can't take that back. Thank you for sharing. But now the lesson is you wish you hadn't. You wish you could erase it and yet therefore you can't. And so as children, we're always in this light, just being fruitful with our imaginations and, you know, being so innocent. And yet as we go, we run into darkness and we run into these mishappenings where we didn't anticipate, we didn't ask for. And yet we don't always know how to handle it because we're children. And as we grow, we haven't had that wisdom yet. And I truly believe this is why King Solomon had asked for that. It's like, give me wisdom. I mean, to even have that moment where you're asked, you know, where you have to decide who's child, newborn child, it, you know, who the mother is, just to have those moments where you had to be the one to make that decision of how are we going to find out who the rightful mother is of this child? That's, that's, I could understand why he asked God for wisdom. For me, when I look back, I know have I have always asked for discernment because I really thought about that and reflected, what have I always asked for? And it, right away, it came into discernment and knowing from right from wrong because I remember being a you know in as a mother and there would be times where I would just be just this energy that pushes me forward of being a mother and uh, not always the nicest way to come forward to your children when you feel like it is time to rent for man it is time to redirect sometimes I, I feel all this energy going forward trying to prevent them from you know going into the wrong direction or continuing to go into the direction that they're going and you know making sure that they understand that it's it's not the character that they would want and so forth even just even really really young and I remember going to another room and just you know asking God is like okay is this what I'm supposed to do and I've always been doing that and I and I realized that everyone's different right whatever you turn to whatever you ask of you know it, for me it was always this this ask this plea of like please just direct me and let me know if I'm going the wrong direction and I will you know go ahead and turn around and go and different direction and it always felt right to even though it was just like okay I'm going to be judged for this I'm going to not be loved by this my children are going to perhaps be spiteful out of my decisions to do this but I have this feeling that I'm in the right direction and I'm going to move forward and as a teacher I do that as a wife I do that as a person I do that in moments where others may have different thoughts of my you know that I should have done and yet I have to go with my discernment my decision to know what is what is right or what is wrong of a choice and you know I have to take that action because ultimately at the end we all have to own who we are and we have to go to bed with us we have to wake up with us we have to look in the mirror and and really see who we are as a person and accept it and I know there are things that are going around now you know that to, to ultimately you you have to wonder like why is it that it is always this thing about being staying silent is the ultimate you know virtue and so forth and you know my students call it snitches get stitches or so and I think to myself yes and no 
there are times to be quiet and there are times that if you feel compelled to speak as long as you can own and I said this recently to my parents like as long as you can own and live with what you've said and you can and you don't feel like you need to take anything back then that's totally fine because I know you know as humans we say some things that can dearly offend and yet I say to myself well I came out I'm not going to be able to take it back so therefore I have to own it and that is essentially what we have to arrive to every time that we make certain decisions and so uh, you know with King Solomon having created all these massive type of decisions I can't imagine one after another and these are the things that you have to address in life you know it's is how do I make the decision that I can live with and so Jonah I remember in uh, you know historically in the Bible talking about how he tried to run away because you know he was given this this purpose and perhaps you have to ask yourselves like why me why me being the victim why am I going to do this you know in 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 a place called Nineveh I believe that it was really described as a place not to be many many unbelievers and yet you know Jonah was the one who was being asked to go over there and really tell everyone you should believe (laughs) and you know it's really interesting because sometimes when you're given the hardest hardest type of order or duty or task or purpose we think to ourselves like we are the victim and we are the ones that's like chosen to do the wrong thing like when I tell my children you know go clean your room or so why me you know and then you become spiteful or you know you should do this and it's like why right now and so forth and students when you direct redirect them it's like what am I doing wrong you're not doing you know there are things that we direct and we give them a path and understand we're on the same team and I wouldn't put you in a position where I knew you couldn't handle it and I wouldn't believe in you so much to ask you to do this if I didn't think you could and that is how I feel and I know in my heart that I'm ever being told like when I'm doing something that I'm afraid to do or I'm you know I don't think I can the more driven I am to prove that yes I can what's holding me back you know and so in this case with Jonah it's just like you can run but you can't hide really is the saying and so all of a sudden you know you're swallowed into this dark you know sea animal right and then all of a sudden you end up coming out of it and you're realizing you just spent some time in darkness but you're still having to do what you're supposed to fulfill and so you know your destiny awaits and the only thing that ends up happening is that you have lost time you have lost energy and you look back and go what have I done and you know it's so funny because I'll, I remember just people would always have to put certain negativity in I guess I could say that negativity and and, you know some type of uh, bitterness into people's actions to try and yet sometimes what people don't realize is they've given so much and I personally speaking for myself like when you've given and committed so much to something a hundred percent sometimes it's okay that you didn't get to do what you wanted to do and want is a strong word right what you plan to do sometimes your plan is not what ends up being and so you say to yourself you know later in time I will do that and that's totally okay and so for me when I look back and go oh my goodness that didn't happen in the time that, you know that I had tried at first because you always try and then all of a sudden you have to stop and go you know what it's it wasn't meant to be I remember one of my children coming to me and in fact my oldest and when I was going through my masters I mean I'm writing my masters in my head you know all my papers while I'm taking them to the park I'm doing things and it is so difficult to hear your children's words when you're writing papers in your head and you're doing so many things in your head and you're telling yourself you got about 30 minutes 45 minutes to write this paper you've already written in your head so that you could go ahead and then join your family once again and be with them and just be done with this paper because you do what you do when you have to right and I remember my oldest coming to me and saying mama how much longer it you know do you have to do this and I remember feeling you know and it's to no one's fault I doesn't really matter you know but I remember thinking to myself I can't wait to finish my master's so I can move on to my doctorate degree and yet when as soon as my oldest said that to me I knew right then and there I was not going to go for my master's and it wasn't you know my child that had convinced me it was my heart that knew it was not the right time 
if I was already taking away from that 100 that I wanted to give them just so that I could put in what I, you know, my 100 for my master's, it's okay that when I finish my master's, if my doctorate has to wait. And it's funny because at this point, you know, all as a teacher, my credentials have already equated to all the classes I've taken and so forth in, at the same doctorate level. And I don't have that degree, but who cares? You know, I mean, that is for me and I'm completely, completely satisfied with knowing guess what? I remember being in college and there was like a 50, 60 year old, I, I think she was probably in her 60s, that was sitting in class with us. She was so happy to just be walk, you know, to be sitting in the same room with us to fulfill her, just to complete her college degree. And I think to myself, I'm going to be so excited if and then when I do decide to take, you know, go and pursue my doctorate degree from whatever classes. And I, and I could see myself doing this and doing that because that's just ultimately who I I am you know and all of us that way it's like sometimes you may not realize that your destiny may take longer than you anticipated and that is okay and so I really think about it from that direction because I don't want to mope and gripe about anything you don't want to be bitter about not getting things done there's reasons for why things don't get done at the time they're supposed to. And regardless of what that reason is, whether you took a different course and you miss the shortcut, so what? Okay. And now it's taking you maybe 10 years. I mean, think about the people who moped and griped for 40 years when they really could have just gone straight into the promised land and gone in and, you know, was fearless about it and, uh, you know, did their thing. It's, it's difficult because you look back and go, wow, 40 years and, and only what Joshua and Caleb makes it not even Moses. And then all of a sudden you just realize to yourself, like, you know, the, all of them could have, but at the same rate, it's like, well, you know, were they okay with that decision? Perhaps not, but you have the next generation to fulfill your destiny. And that is to me, that piece where you're planting a seed and it's not as if like you're asking for the like now if you know sometimes you get approached and are asked like oh you know you could do this and do that and you could get all of this exposure and so and I always ask I think to myself if one starfish is you know being impacted by what you do then that is to me more than enough. And I know that eventually, exponentially, it'll work itself out. And sometimes, you know, you go, okay, well, I'll try this and I try that. Sometimes you just have to rejoice and go, you know, this is what I do and I'm just happy with it. So you have to ask yourself, if not me, then who? As a teacher, as a mother, as a wife, just as a person, you have to ask yourself, like, where do you put in your hundred? What race are you running? And at what point can you honestly say to yourself, you'll get to that destiny? Because we could sit here on a couch, you could, you know, take a nap and say to yourself, well, when I get up, then I just do what I do tomorrow. And, you know, sometimes that's going to happen. Look at my blank canvas in the back and I'm okay with it. I, I, you know, I'm that person that goes from one thing after another. I've shared with you a book. Thank you, by the way, to the person at the uh, library. I know that someone is helping me there to extend my... Uh, sometimes when I have a book that's overdue, thank you for whoever it is that just like, I, I know what you're doing and God bless you for that. And so thank you so much because I go in there, I was like, oh, some, you know, you have your angels, right? And so I was like, oh, I didn't have time to finish it. And I only had 30 days to do this. But you know, you have people out there that are rooting for you and, and just know that. And sometimes if it doesn't feel that way, know that it's still your purpose, know that it is still your destiny and know that no matter what, you were chosen for that to be a victor and not a victim. And so therefore you are to fulfill that role. You are to fulfill whatever it was that was given to you because no one else was thought of to be strong enough, to be able enough to do it, but you. And so you have to put yourself in that position. If you ha take a long nap, longer than 15 minutes that you anticipated, which felt really good, by the way, you wake up and you say to yourself, okay, time to do what I have to do. And that is where you go. It doesn't matter how long it took you to get there, you will finish. And so in the words of my mother, God bless us all, you have to think to yourself, if not you, then who? Because you are made to be something. You're made to be something more than sometimes we even understand. And that's a beautiful thing.
So thank you for listening, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.